believe you just did that. It's a ploy, right? You can't just sell Home Farm. Our shares are the only thing left to sell. There has to be an alternative. What do you suggest? Turn a sofa upside down, see what drops out? Why are you doing this? I think James might miss us both if we were banged up for fraud. But you haven't done anything wrong. The greed's fine, Steve. Mix it with stupidity and you deserve everything you get. I've been stupid. So, I'm paying the price. Still, it's fun while it lasted. You'll lose the house. I'll lose it anyway if we're declared bankrupt. If we're seen to be making amends to the creditors, then at least we stand a chance of keeping a low profile and making a fresh start. My blood's in the brickwork of Home Farm. And you'd give it all up for me? To keep you out of prison? Of course. We're in this together. Anyway, I'm not planning to lose it forever. And remember, you are talking to the woman who rose from the dead. What are we celebrating? Kim's finished. Now I'm going to have her shares. How? I thought Tara was reluctant to loan you the money for Steve's. She'll make a whacking profit. And now she gets the chance to be involved in Kim's humiliation, she won't be able to resist. Well, it can't be that simple. It never is with Kim. Did you notice that when she arrived earlier, she had a ladder in her tights? I thought you did. You see, the clues are all in the details. And that's all the proof you need? Sometimes business is so simple, it's in a wonky tie. Ladder in tights in her case. I knew she was finished. Pathetic, isn't it? Fellow directors, you get first chance on my shares. You've got two weeks to make me an offer. Have some champagne. It's not properly chilled. You must learn these things, Chris. Take lessons from the woman who waltzed up the aisle like a sap while the man she loved was taking her for every penny. I don't think so. You dropped your guard there, didn't you, Mummy? If you've got something to oh, say... stop this. I can't do this. I'm going home. Well? No, Zoe's right. If we couldn't tell you about Steve before the wedding, what's the point of raking it all up now? Cheers, Matt. We need to get more people in the bar, Terry. Business hasn't been that bad lately. I don't think you understand how bad things are. Well, you mean Steve really is bankrupt, then? Yeah, not officially, as far as I know, but if things are as bad as I think, then the profits and the wool pack are all I've got left. <laughs> It's at times like this, I'm glad I'm permanently skinned. Only a young man could make a comment like that. Have you heard anything else, Alan? Yes, yeah, the waiting I find difficult. Yeah, well, if it were me, I'd be up at home farm like a shop. I went up there earlier. I got absolutely nowhere. I've even had some of Steve's clients on the phone. People I got to know when I was working for him. Well, why are they phoning you? Because he won't answer the calls. And some of them are really desperate for information. From financial whiz kid to babysitter. How cute. Oh, uh, this is mine. And uh, so are those. Mine. But I do believe that's now your property. It's the only thing around here that is. I'm entitled to remove all my personal files. You lost all entitlements when you screwed up your business, matey. You're a liability, so keep your mitts off. You're loving this, aren't you? better than sex. Oh, I stand corrected. These are yours. Popular guy. Dear Mr. Marchant, dear Mr. Marchant. Ah, now this is a good one. Marchants. Well, it... you've got a lot of correspondence to catch up on. Back off, Chris. How did you do it? Do what? How did you get Kim to hand over all that lovely lolly? I mean, I'm impressed. Any man who can bankrupt Cruella is worth his weight in gold. Have you told her that you promised me your shares before the wedding? <laughs> I thought not. I don't see why we have to drive through the village. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise I had to justify my route to you. My employment laws have changed. Stick these in the box, please. There's a good comrade. You employed me as a chauffeur. 
Has anyone ever told you how deeply unattractive you are when you're churlish? Oi, Biff, mate! You've given me change for ten. Well, you didn't give me twenty. No, I'll give you a fiver. Um, I'll handle this, Al. Thanks, Terry. I think I need a break. I'm sorry about that, but... Do you know, he treated me like I was trying to rob him. Aye, well, you wouldn't be the first. Look, keep your fiver, Betty. They're on me. Well, he's worried sick about Steve March. Paul has been round his house taking stuff like it would have bring him by. It's all a bit grim. Aye. Well, he's married Kim Tate now. She'll bail him out. Oh, well, when you marry someone, you get half of everything. Or half of nothing. I'm telling you, it will Biff drive it. Cardi had old clobber on it. Lock. He's working for her. No, he is. Well, I'll have something to say about that. Oh, don't practice on me. Save it for him. Look at these, Lise. Are you flush? We know them clothes are Jan Glovers. Took them down to Totten Market. Guy in the second hand store. Give me 20 quid. I thought Ned said you couldn't have them. Well, I'm not saying that I'm proud. I'm just 20 quid richer. I mean, it's money for all rope, innit? Hmm. I suppose I can't criticise. I still feel a bit naughty myself moving into that garage without permission. <laughs> <laughs> Two bad girls together, eh? <laughs> hey, no wonder Kim Tate's always got that dirty smirk on her face. It's quite a turn on, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a terrible feeling. That'll be your ears, Betty. Is he a permanent fixture? You've got to look after your apprentices. Aye. Are we going up to check those traps off? Do we have to? Yes, you do. And you don't stop till we've got a freezer full. We need to stock up. I thought you weren't partial to game. No, well, I'm going to have to get used to it, aren't I? Because if what folks say is true, you won't be getting your wages from the big house for much longer. Hey, Betty, love, listen. You might be old, but me and him won't let you starve. No, you won't, because I shall put you in a pie if you don't stop these old biddy comments. Well? Well, what? <laughs> you know, the thing I both like and loathe about you, Zoe, is your inability to lie. Now, I can take anything Chris throws at me. Let's face it, I thrive on it. So I would have ignored his little jibes about Steve earlier if it hadn't been for your pinched nun-like little face giving the game away. Oh, what was I supposed to say? So you did think Steve was ripping me off before I married him? I think I will have that drink. You know, I thought I might have at least expected a little sisterly solidarity from a lesbian. What the hell's that got to do with anything? There's never been any love lost between the two of us. That didn't stop me supporting your relationship with Sophie. Oh, I was the only person in the village who did. You did it for her. Do you really think I hate you so much that I would deliberately get in the way of your happiness? Oh, believe me, I know love doesn't come along very often. And me being wrapped up in Sophie distracted me from business at home farm. There's always something in it for you, Kim. It's not just me. I've got James to think about as well. James is barely two years old. You were plotting and scheming against the rest of us long before you had a child. So this is about revenge. Oh. I've finally been put in my place. Makes you feel good, does it? Settling your pathetic little scores and ruining my life into the bargain. I didn't know that Steve was in so much trouble. So you just wanted to teach me a lesson, did you? There are no half measures when you knife someone in the back, Zoe. You stick it in right up to the hilt or you don't bother. I do care about James. And I'm sorry. Well, fortunately, he's too young to understand what's happened. But I'll make him understand what you've done to him. You can count on it. Do you want a hand? Another day, another dollar. I think if I see another scene of the Dales, I'll spit. Oh, I think it's lovely. It's gorgeous. But we're stuck in here instead of out there. You've never been interested in traipsing up and down hills. Well, I wouldn't mind sitting in a car with a flask, admiring the view. It's a good job I've arranged some half-day cover twice a week, then, isn't it, eh? 
I said I would, and I did. Well, that's brilliant. Not Kelly, is it? No, of course it isn't. She'd do it if I told her. Oh, well, I've heard that before. I mean it, Viv. I've stood by that girl for all her traumas. Now it's payback time. You do want to make this work, don't you? Yeah, I want to be happy. I'm fed up of fighting. Yeah, me too. Great. So how's about we all go out, you know, tomorrow night, like a proper family? Oh, look, we've tried that a hundred times before and it's always ended in a scrap. Let's just take it nice and slowly. Yeah, all right. Whatever you say. Ginger. <laughs> Have you ever heard of knocking? We didn't want to give you the chance not to answer the door. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. Actually, it's Steve we're after. Us and a thousand others. We'll join the queue. He left last night after putting James to bed and I haven't seen him since. <sighs> He's probably getting drunk somewhere. You're not helping with your snide comments. Oh, God. Is that the best you can come up with? I said all I had to say yesterday. Where have you been? Out! I'm trying to work something out. And have you? Because if you think this is a pain, I can assure you it will get a lot worse when the people who wrote those faxes turn up. And they will. Can't you at least try to explain how you managed to lose all our money? I seem to remember you lost me about 50 grand at the touch of a button, and that's why I sacked you. That was a mistake. At least I was honest. And what do you mean by that? I'm afraid I rather suspect that you were already in trouble when you took my savings from me. Prove it. Steve! When will you thickets understand there's no such thing as a surefire investment? Nothing's guaranteed. That's not what you told me. It's called selling, Alan. Any broker would say the same thing. If you want your money safe, stick it under your mattress, you stupid old fool. Take a faultless truck to get out from under How dare you talk to me like that, you rotten Stop it, man. Alan. Just let him go. You would say that. Oh, shut up for once. Make him sit down. Alan, for God's sake, calm down before you have a heart attack. I've got nothing left, Kim. So... Kim shares too. If you ask to borrow any more money, I'll have to think about remortgaging the house. Tara. All right, all right. Ladies do not like to be shoved, Chris. Get a grip. I don't think you realise just how important this is to me. Oh, I do. I do. I know how much you loathe Kim. Shame for Steve, though. I don't think it'd be that much fun, Paul. So, Daddy and I need to see some paperwork. Lots of it. The amount you're asking to borrow, if home farm goes pear-shaped, we'll all end up in the workhouse. Look, I can assure you they've only screwed up with their own money, not the estates. Mm, they have to be sure. Look, I can have enough paperwork for you to... Uh, to decorate this room with. <laughs> well, let's not go mad. Although I did think about doing it in sheet music once. When can you get the money? Oh, give me a break. You're like a dog with a bone. But I only have two weeks. <sighs> Don't worry. I'm sure I'll think of something. These are the best days of my life. <laughs> Steve's lost everything, Alan. He feels guilty and humiliated, and he's a man. He's bound to up and run for a few days. You usually do. So what happens now? Insolvency's new to me as well, Rachel. But you're both friends, so I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you're only saying that to save yourself the embarrassment of having to face us in the village. What about everybody else? My family comes first. I am no different to anybody else on that score. Now, if you can see yourselves out, I've got a phone call to make. How much do you think we'll get? Alan, don't fall for it. Half an hour ago, you were ready to rip the heads off. Now you're going to be grateful for a few crumbs? Rich people, they will always do this. Make you feel like the priority, as long as you're willing to forget about everybody else. I know most of Steve's clients, and they're all like us. Little people with no power and everything to lose. You don't do it like that. Well, you told me you were going to teach me how to do it properly. Carry on, son. You're doing a grand job. Steph, can I have some of them rabbits that we got last night? Betty's put them in the freezer. See, it seemed cruel to separate and then be in family. What did you do with birds? I sold them to butchers in autumn first thing. That's one day for that. Of course. I wouldn't try and diddle you, you know, Seth. We're partners, you and me, aren't we? Of course we are, son. Can I start on your sandwiches now? Finish mine. Hey, what have we here? Oh, Eric! I thought it were police. Oh. And the problem with that would be? Nothing. Uh, nothing at all. Uh, oh, we're all above board here. 
as ever since Sam, you see. Well, once they get you in their clutches, but... Well, you'd know all about that. You're no stranger to law enforcement. Quite. <laughs> it's just yours. Yeah. Uh, no. Well, no, oh, yes, and no. We found it up at farm underneath a load of old scrap. Amazing what you can find under old washing machines these days. So, by rights, it's Zach's. Hey, I've never seen it in my life before. Bit of an eyesore, cluttering out the place. Uh, I tell you what, I, I know a chap who works on no, old wrecks like this. Um, I'll give you 70 quid for it. Don't. Hey, Zach! What? <laughs> Thank you very much for your advice, Eric. Uh, I'd be happy to work on a car of yours any time. <laughs> do you think I'm mad? Hey. She can do your dodgy MOT. Really? I will not. Now, show me your old red camshaft or scarper. If he says it's worth 70 pounds, it's worth 10 times more. Why can't you dingle men learn not to grab up things so quick? Huh? Well, you didn't say that last night. Come here. <laughs> James. James? Where's James? You promised to watch him for five minutes. I was watching him. Steve came to collect him. He's taken him out for a couple of hours. Oh, right, I forgot. Yeah. He thought you might need a break to get on with work. By the way, what's happened to James's nanny? Had to let her go. She wasn't up to scratch. And that's got nothing to do with the fact that you can't afford to pay her, I suppose. You can just imagine the gossip on the nanny grapevine, can't you? Be all over Yorkshire by now, if not Britain. <laughs> Since when have I cared what people think about me? Since when have you cared? <sighs> I... I don't remember offering. Still mine till the shares are sold. Then who knows who's going to own the place? Now, it's a difficult one, isn't it? You see, I think that would be me. Did Steve tell you that he'd already agreed to some of his shares? I thought not. Stir it all you like, Chris. But make it quick, because this is getting really tedious. He's had you every which way and you didn't even see it coming. See, when I found out that he'd lost his and your money, I... How did he persuade you to part with it, by the way? I mean, is he talented in the trouser department? Hey, don't tell me. I might throw up. Anyway, he knew I knew, and he offered me his shares. The morning of the wedding, actually. You're lying. You can ask him if he ever comes back. Or oh, apparently, you can get a good price for a toddler on the open market these days. <laughs> For. I'm not, I'm just helping. Oh, you do the fandango with me dad and suddenly we're the perfect family again. I bet you only did that dancing thing so you could eye up the other blokes. If someone took your fancy, you'd be off like a shot. Do you know, sometimes the urge to take your face off is just too much to bear. Well, go on then, do it. If she doesn't, I will. <sighs> She's always hassling me. Forget it, Vic. Viv, there's somebody in the shop. Well, I'll go. You stay there. Viv. You wouldn't mind? You wanted her to land you one, didn't you? So you could come running to me. Make me choose again. Well, that's great. You hate me now. I'm not playing this game anymore, Kelly. I have chosen. I want to be happy. I deserve a bit of happiness. With her? After what she did to you? Grow up, will you? I think you're ahead of the rest of us when it comes to making stupid mistakes. And we've always stood by her. Now, get upstairs. Tidy your room. It's like a pigsty. I'm not a kid, you know. Good. Well, I'm glad you said that. Because that means we won't have any more silly games with Viv, will we? So you've not only got him doing old work, you've got him buying old drinks as well. This is fantastic. He's a keen learner, so I like to make him feel a bit special. It helps. I'm a special kind of mug, and that's about it. Right, there you go. <laughs> Seth? Are you going to uh, check them traps in the morning? I'd like to, of course, but I've been a martyr to my lumbago for the last few mornings. I thought you said it was your sciatic nerve. Yeah, well, uh, it's definitely some kind of nerve, isn't it, sir? Less gas in, more supping. Where's Alan? Uh, he's having another break. Stress is really getting to him. Well, he'll be interested in my news, then. Oh, I'll go and get him. Hang on a minute. I've got a proposal for you from the headmaster. He said he remembered that he used to play for the Farsley Meatheads or something. Wondered if he'd help with the rugby training at school. PE teacher's gone and broken his leg. Please say yes, Terry. It's for the final. Might they win? 
Depends on the quality of the coaching, I would think. Oi! Don't you turn your back on me, Parker. What's the point in talking to you? I lost everything because of the Oakwells, and now you're driving Lady Penelope around the village. No, you didn't lose your job, Ned. All right, so I'll tell you what, you supplement my door check every week and then I'll go and tell Tara where to stick a job. Oh, it's Tara now, is it? I'll get stuff. <sighs> Gives a pint, Alan. Gotta give us a chair, so I'm gonna need it. I think I might join you on that. Um, I've been in touch with some of the investors, Alan. One woman's lost over £200,000. <laughs> my heart bleeds for her. Oh, that's right, Ned, you make a joke of it. There's at least a dozen people who are more than willing to come over here to meet us to see what pressure we can put on Kim and Steve. I'm not sure about that, Rachel. Helen's right, you'll get nowhere. <laughs> Do you mind, Eddie? You don't even know what we're talking about. Little conspiracies to get your own back. I've had more of them than you've had hot dinners, love. You take it from me. Once they screw you, you stay screwed. Poor little lad's knackered. He was asleep when we got back, so I put him to bed for an hour or so. Is that okay? It's absolutely fine. Drink? Why not? If I get drunk enough, it might stand as mitigating circumstances. Not now, Kim, not you. I've had it from all sides all day. I don't need it from you. No, of course you don't. Poor baby, you've had a terrible time. Walking my son off his feet because you were too ashamed to face me. Am I such a terrifying prospect? I don't take any pleasure in what's happened, you know. In what's happened? Like it was some terrible accident. Unfortunate, but couldn't be helped. You should think yourself very lucky that I am totally penniless. Why is that? Because I'd have asked Zoe to put you down. <laughs> Only I couldn't afford the damn vet's bill. That's enough. Oh, I don't think so. Look, a matching pair. <laughs> you never make a bowler. <laughs> that one was just for me. Uh, why should I worry? None of this belongs to me anymore. You made sure of that. Yours! Your way, James! <laughs> Everybody's worried about James all of a sudden. Well, pity you didn't think about that when you were going behind my back with Chris. How many others knew what you were up to? Tara? Your dead father, who miraculously turned up at the wedding. That's a wedding present. Now, oh, get off me! I said get off me! I'm warning you! I'm oh, you'll just... do what? I won't be the first husband you've outlived. Stop! <laughs> Anything I can do, you've done it better. Except you do it for yourself. If I schemed and con, it's because I wanted you. You wanted the money, you piece of scum! If that's the case, why am I still here? There's no money left. I'm here because I love you and James. <laughs> you still haven't answered my question. I don't give a toss why you're still here. If you want me to go, I'll go. Oh, no. Don't think you can get out of it that easily. I'm glad you love James, because you're going to be spending an awful lot of time looking after him while I earn us a living. 